Good afternoon. Good afternoon, all you beautiful people. Um, welcome to our, I guess it's almost like an annual veterans, third veterans uh, celebration. Um, and if you're a veteran over here, I, I'd like to extend my thanks personally for the service that you provided to this country. Um, and it's meaningful to me because I served in the South African Army for two years and I spent a year in a combat zone so I am familiar with the cost of serving in a military in many ways that I can't share with you now. So if you're in the military, thank you very much. Now what they used to make us do when we got ready to pray was say, attend, shoot! Everybody still stayed seated. Must be a bunch of civilians. <laughs> and then they would say to take off your hat. Okay. One, two, three, one. And everybody's hats were off. Thank you for your reverence. Let's pray. God of compassion. God of dignity and strength. Watch over the veterans of the United States. In recognition of their loyal service to our nation, bless them with wholeness and love. Shelter them, heal their wounds on all levels. Comfort their hearts, grant them peace. God of justice and truth, rock of our lives. Bless our veterans, these men and women of courage and valor, with a deep and abiding understanding of our profound gratitude. Protect them and their families from loneliness and want. Grant them lives of joy and bounty. May their dedication and honor be remembered as a blessing from generation to generation to generation. Blessed are you, protector and redeemer, our shield and our stronghold. Amen. At ease. Good afternoon, everyone. We would like to welcome everyone today as we take the time to honor our country's veterans. You guys can be seated. Yeah. <laughs> Let me start off by discussing the purpose of celebrating this special holiday. Veterans Day is a time for respecting anyone who has served in our armed forces. It is a time we take out of our regular routines and busy work schedules to acknowledge those people who have offered so much for us. Some veterans made the ultimate sacrifice. Fathers, mothers, nieces, nephews, our brothers and our sisters lay down their lives to grant us the opportunity to live ours. Other veterans have served in times of peace and some have served during times of conflict. No matter how they served, they have always served us and for this we are forever grateful. Even though sometimes we may take for granted the life we get to live every day, it is important to remember the only reason we get to live freely and express our independent beliefs is because of the many men and women who have fought selflessly for our nation. There are approximately 23.2 million mil military veterans in the United States. Veterans Day comes only once a year, but we can and we should acknowledge their commitment and bravery each and every day. Whenever we say the Pledge of Allegiance or whenever we sing the National Anthem, it should remind us of 
all the many men and women that have given up their personal freedoms, freedoms that we tend to take for granted, to protect their country and their fellow citizens. So for instance, when listening to the national anthem, I can't help but get overwhelmed with thankfulness because it speaks about the land of the free and the home of the brave. And it makes me wonder about all the things I wouldn't have if it wasn't for the courageous men and women risking their lives for us. For instance, my immigrant family and I, we come from a small town in southern Mexico, from Michoacan, Mexico, where the violence gets really rough and the people are victims to corruption, drug wars, mafias, and the lack of government authority. All because not many people are willing to fight for the peace of their own country. One time on a visit, my family and I saw kids working on the streets selling candy, a corollary of Mexico's high poverty. It was then that I was blessed and lucky enough to have met Gloria and Jose. They were siblings. They approached us and asked us if we wanted to buy any candy from them. My dad started talking to the two and Jose explained their necessities for, sell for selling things on the streets. They hoped to cross into the US and to flee from all the violence and corruption in their hometown. And like me, to receive an education. He stressed the importance that it was no longer safe for them to be roaming freely on the streets. He stressed the importance of his sister not being safe, walking alone anywhere without being degraded by men. His younger brother was no longer safe walking to school without seeing bloodshed. He talked about kidnappings, shootings, murders, all occurring in plain day. Now, raise your hand if you've ever been caught between crossfire near your home or going outside. As I can see, that's a plain example of the safety that we can take for granted every day. I bet here on campus, you can be out on the green at 3 a.m., 4 a.m., and some people do not have that privilege to walk even outside of their homes without fear. But that was what Jose and Gloria's lives consisted of. At one point, Jose's determination of reaching the U.S. reached such an extreme that he rode the beast, also known of, as the network of trains that crossed from Latin America, from U.S. into the U.S. Once he got hold of a ladder and jumped on the train, it shook him off so hard that he ended up falling. He landed on a boulder and it damaged his spine. And the process that ultimately prevented him from continuing to work on the fields and helping out his family. When Gloria and Jose told me their experiences, I then realized they were young people just like me, seeking their goals. However, unlike me or any other of us, they weren't risking their lives to have access to opportunities, a life of opportunities I was given the privilege of having. Thanks to this country, and the veterans who fought for our freedoms and our liberty, we do not have to encounter what Jose and Gloria had to see at home and every day of their lives. Can you imagine having your child wonder if they will ever come back home alive or what awaits them once they step foot outside of their home? No child should be ever exposed to those dangers. In the grand scheme of things, Gloria and Jose's story could have been mine but thanks to the people who took a stand and defend our lands and our rights, it was not. Thanks to our veterans, we have been able to have the freedom to walk in confidence and not fear, to speak plainly and not be pers persecuted. Thanks to their sacrifices, we are able to enjoy the company of our, of our loved ones peacefully. I am reminded daily of how blessed I am to get the opportunities and freedoms we are given because of the lives fighting for this amazing country. I believe that sometimes we get so caught up in our daily routines and with the material things in this life that we end up basically forgetting about what is important. Our families and the people around us are the biggest blessings veterans have given us. It is really important for us to remember what goes on in the world so that we can be happy and free and have all the luxuries our life has to offer. We are such a blessed country because of all the people who have fought for it, to give us the freedom to be whoever we want to be, to live our lives, and to have equal opportunities. For every time we place our right hand over our hearts, we need to remember one thing, the sacrifice and willingness to fight for the ultimate reward, which is our freedom. 
Speaking on behalf of my family and the many other military families, I am proud to be a part of the support system at home from where these soldiers thrive. To personally experience the sacrifices made by these soldiers has had a huge impact on our lives. Even if you are not part of a military family, it is wonderful to know that there are so many brave people who are willing to risk their lives to fight for something much greater than themselves. If you have served in the military or in active duty, please stand to be recognized. Now for the rest of us, let's take a minute to honor and acknowledge their great contributions to our country. If you have a mother, father, sister, brother, or any other family member of a person who is serving or who has served in the military, please stand and also be recognized for the fact sacrifices you have also made. Thank you. Thank you. So this is a Veterans Day tribute, it's a poem. Uh, it's called The Noble and the Brave, and it's written by Joanna Fuchs. When America had an urgent need, these brave ones raised a hand. No hesitation held them back. They were proud to take a stand. They left their families and their friends. They gave up normal life to serve their country and their God they plowed into the strife. They fought for freedom and for peace on strange and foreign shores. Some lost new friends, some lost their lives in long and brutal wars. Other veterans answered a call to support the ones who fought. Their country had requirements for the essential skills they brought. We salute every one of them, the noble and the brave the ones still with us here today and those who rest in a grave. So here's to our country's heroes. They're a cut above the rest. Let's give the honor that is due to our country's very best. Let's sing together. 
be here to recognize our veterans today and to introduce today's guest speaker. Professor Mark Bensel is Assistant Professor of Music at Andrew College. Uh, prior to joining the Andrew College faculty in fall 2016, Professor Bensel served as Musician's First Class in the United States Navy from 1986 to 2008. During his time in service, Professor Vince Bensel served in the Pacific Fleet and the Atlantic Fleet, as well as 13 years at the U.S. Naval Academy in Annapolis, Maryland. Uh, in addition to Navy bands, Professor Bensel was a firearms instructor for the United States Marine Corps for three months and served in the Auxiliary Security Force at the U.S. Naval Academy for the six months following 9-11. We are honored to have him here today and as part of the Andrew College family. Please join me, Professor Mark Bensel. Thank you, Chris. Thanks very much. Um, I guess because you're the new guy, that's when you get to speak, right? And uh, having only been here at Andrew since, Andrew since August, I guess it was my turn. Um, when I was asked to talk at this event, the first thing that came to mind was, who is this person we call veteran? And I thought, well, I'll do a little digging and see if I can define this person we call veteran. So the first thing I did is I thought, well, I'll look at the statistics. I'll look at the statistics that veterans today make up about 1% of the population, a little less than 1% of the population. So we could define them as a small group among the population. But there are other very small groups of people in our society. Only about 33% of Americans have college educations. Only about 10% have master's degrees, and only about 1% have terminal or doctorate degrees. So I can't really use the segment of society as a definition of veteran. Um, today, there are about 5.5 million veterans of the post-Vietnam era, the period of time since the end of the Vietnam War to today, about 5.5. There are about 7 million Vietnam era veterans. There are about 2 million Korean War veterans, and there are around 1.1 million World War II veterans still alive. There are no living World War I veterans, and there are no veterans of anything prior to that left alive. So I can't really define them by a period of time, either can I, because we really have veterans going back to 1776 arguably 1775, technically. So I couldn't use a period of time to define them. So then I thought, well, perhaps I could define veterans by uh, their roles in our society today. Maybe I was, could figure out where are they in our society now and define them that way. But we have veterans that are CEOs of multi-billion dollar companies, and we have veterans that are homeless and live under overpasses and everything in between. So I couldn't use their economic uh, or their social status as a way of defining them because they fit everywhere in our society. We, we notice today that they're all over this room right now. Uh, so then I thought, well, maybe I could define them by what they did in the military. After all, every veteran put on the uniform of the armed forces, right? So maybe I can define them that way. But veterans, when they were in the military, did every job you can imagine that a large organization like the armed forces needs done, from truck drivers to pilots to uh, infantrymen, soldiers, to aircraft mechanics, to just anything you can think of. Cooks, 
everything. And so I couldn't define them by their job in the military either. I can't define them by their particular level within the military because veterans spent as little as six months in the service at the end of a war and never got above E2. And we've got four-star generals in the veterans and everything in between. So who is this person we call veteran? Can't define them as men or women because we have both. And I was trying to figure out how to define the veteran. And then I remembered that every time I went into the service when I first joined it, and then when I re-enlisted every time, because after every few years, you have to either recommit or you get to move on, uh, there was a particular thing we did called the Oath of Office. And it was basically you making a promise. Veterans, you know what I'm talking about. And one of the lines in that Oath of Office says that I will support and defend and then that word, that word, finally made me realize how I could define the veteran. That word, defend. Because every veteran, no matter what their job was in the military, no matter what they're doing now, no matter how they ended up in the service, after all, some veterans were drafted, some joined on a dare, some did it because they needed to escape all those parking tickets, and some did it because they were in families where everybody was in. I don't know about the rest of you veterans, but in my family, every male member of my family going back to my grandfather has been in the service. I had two grandfathers in the Army. My dad was in the Navy uh, in World War II. My uncle was in the, two uncles in the Army during Korea. One is still over there somewhere that I had chosen. The other one lives in Arizona, retired. Uh, I spent 22 years in the Navy. My son just finished five years in the Marines and just got out. So people end up in the military for all kinds of different reasons. But every one of us who has been in the service has used that word, those words, I will defend. But to go a little deeper into that, defend what? Defend a place? Defend a white columned mansion with an oval-shaped office? No. Defend a tall domed building where people can discuss and debate ideas and disagreements? No. Defend a piece of cloth made of red, white, and blue material? No. no. Defend what? Defend an idea a radical idea that was born during the Enlightenment period in the late 18th century. People like John Locke and Montesquieu talking about this radical notion that human beings don't get their rights from a government giving it to them, but they're born with them. Because the rights that come from a government can be taken away by a government. But if you're born with them, if God gave you those rights, then nothing can take those away from you. That was a radical idea just 240 years ago. Most of us don't realize that throughout almost all of human history, human beings have lived under some form of tyranny. Either a monarchy, or a dictatorship, or some kind of feudal system. But this radical idea that people can choose for themselves a government is what the veteran defended. Now I can finally define the veteran. The veteran defended, no matter what their job was in the service, they defended that radical idea that every two years, a people can go through a process of deciding how they will be governed. No tanks in the streets, like we saw in Turkey not too long ago. No soldiers on the corner, like we see all over the world. A decision 
for ourselves. Doesn't mean it always turns out the way we individually want it to turn out, but it is possible to choose it for ourselves. And that idea is the great gift that the veteran has given us because the veteran has said, no matter how they ended up in the service, and even if they didn't really want to be there, they could have run away, they could have run off to Canada, they could have said no when they got drafted, but they went anyway. They did defend that idea. They said to the rest of us that while I wear this uniform, those things in the world that want to get rid of that idea can't get to us unless they go through them. That is what the veteran did and does for all of us. So I was relieved to finally figure out what my definition of veteran was because I racked my brain trying to come up with it. So to veterans, I will just say a very, very simple thank you because you defended something more important than any of the physical things we talk about, and even the places, and really even the people. You defended the most radical idea in human history. Always remember that gift that you inherited, and that gift is that radical idea. So thank you, veterans. God bless America, and God bless all of you. Thank you. Sing again. <clears throat> Ready? God bless America.
again, I apologize for the technical difficulties, but as Professor Grossman would say, the show must go on. Um, and that brings us to the conclusion of ours. And for the veterans here, coming from a military family, I give you my heartfelt thank you for what you've done and for the families of the veterans, being a daughter of a serviceman, knowing what it's like, those sacrifices at home, I thank you as well. Thank you for coming.